Like we're, now we're uh, in session. Any adjustments to the agenda needed? We just have a resignation to share with the board. Okay. Let's go do that. Let's uh, let's start with the discussion items. White River, the COVID nineteen updates. I'm going to go step out and get my glasses. I'll be right back. But go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Don. So I just wanted to share with the board where we're at right now in, in preparation for the reopening of schools on September 8th. Um, I am now up to weekly communication with the community. Uh, we're holding, in addition to written communication, we're holding uh, WRVSU-wide informational meetings on Thursday evenings at 530. Those will continue up through until September 8th. Um, our schools are all, have all held or are holding this week informational meetings specific to school buildings. Um, we are open for in-person instruction from 8 to 3 o'clock daily. At 1.30, we heard via survey results that families wanted the opportunity to pick children up if possible. So all core content instruction Math and literacy will occur from 9 o'clock till 1.30 daily. Lunch will happen in that time. There'll be a brief recess that will be structured to count for physical education. And that will happen K through 8, five days a week, except for RUD. We had to go with a different schedule to begin with for RUD Middle School due to just the pure number of students we have on that campus. The plan is to pilot a schedule two days on, a full virtual learning day, and then two more days on for students, just so folks are clear, teachers are in the building across all campuses five days a week throughout their contracted day. It's just students that will be a bit different in RUD. Um, the plan would be after six weeks to assess RUD and move to four full days of in-person instruction starting week seven with a virtual day in the middle of the week. Um, and if that continues to go well, there's talks then that we would, the next phase in would be five full days a week as well for middle and high school students. If um, transmission stays low and the numbers across the SU and state stay low. So that's the plan at RUD. For our K-8s, like I said, we have five days a week of in-person instruction. We also have a full five day a week virtual learning academy that will happen across the SU. There's been some talk about why the SU we quickly realized we couldn't offer a full virtual learning academy and in-person instruction without adding additional staffing. This is an attempt for us to not have to add additional staffing. We're gonna prioritize faculty that would be um, COVID exempt per the feds regs around COVID exemptions. They're pretty tight, but we do have some teachers that are. Instead of those teachers just going out on FMLA, those teachers will be the teachers that will teach the virtual learning academy across the SU. Uh, Lindy Stetson is going to take a lead with central office personnel to be the admin point person for the virtual learning academy for those students that are selecting that. Um, this way we have consistent um, expectations and approach across the SU. Excuse me, Jamie. Yeah. The, the employees that are going to be doing the virtual um, education component are they going to be also training to do the excel the ac classes ap ap classes sorry AP at the high school level so the high school level looks a little different because we don't have as many of them right right and so what we're trying to do at the high school level is teachers will be blocked for virtual blocks instead of just teaching pure virtual it the numbers are such that i'm not as concerned about our high school staffing being able to do the virtual academy we have enough staffing at rudd high school to assign them an actual virtual block unlike elementary where you have self-contained classrooms it's not like they're teaching in blocks they're with the students all day they'll be with the students from 8 30 right up until 1 30. And so the staffing is a little bit different for the high school. So the high school will have a virtual learning block, like they'll have in-person algebra one, virtual algebra one, in-person algebra one, in-person algebra one. Carl has a question. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, is this all? Is this all going to fit within? They're going to will the teachers that at the high school level that are teaching virtually. Um, you know, still have their same number of preps, 
still have their same number of, of uh, uh, organizations. So we're, we're, we're not expecting any kind of union pushback. Yeah, no, um, I've worked, uh, I just uh, met with the union uh, again today. At this time, um, it's been an unbelievably collaborative process, and they are, are in support of our work. Um, I, I met with the executive board today. There wasn't any complaints about our approach thus far. And um, yeah, they'll get their planning time. All that's in these schedules. There's a few classes, Don, that I can't staff, and we're going to use BTVLC to provide some of those virtual classes at the high school level. Okay. And we already have a membership and partnership with them already. Yeah. Uh, Rodney has a question. One more second oh. part to that. The second part of that, Jamie, um, what will the virtual academy look like for our K through six, K through eighters? Will it be a full day of just online synchronous Google meets? Well, no. will it be a combination of synchronous and asynchronous? What, what, what is our vision for, I mean, I know Lindsay, Lindy's doing it, so I'm really happy about that because she's awesome. But I mean, what's our vision for what that, that, that day would look it's like for our kids? combination. And so there'll be a flipped classroom. Teachers will teach the direct, they'll videotape the direct instruction. Students will be able to access that throughout the day. And then in addition, teachers are going to have instructional blocks for students. Like all students in the virtual academy will start with a morning meeting. We'll take attendance. They'll come to morning meeting. We'll go through responsive classroom steps, just like we do in person. They'll have a cohort that they're assigned. So that happens every day. Then they'll go into a literacy block. They could have already watched the video or not. Teachers then will be available and they'll have small group instruction like they would in the classroom. So they'll have a whole mini lesson that's already videotaped. And then teachers will meet with small groups to reinforce the video and to provide direct instruction that way. And then there'll, a side of that be extra practice. Whether that happens then or later, the family has some flexibility around that. So that happens for an hour and a half. Then the next step is math, same process. Taped mini lesson that's already been put on the Google Classroom. Teacher will meet with the groups of students during that period of time, reinforce the lesson. Lunch will happen. We're gonna provide a supervised lunch for social time every day, whether the, ch the child chooses to participate or not, will be up to them. Intervention and essentials will happen after lunch. So we're still, we're gonna offer intervention and essentials. That will be a scheduled block of time. And then office hours. So if a family says Mondays from eight to 11 didn't work for the small group instruction, our teachers will be available in office hours in the afternoon that day to get the small group instruction then. What we're trying to emphasize to families, though, it can't be I just checked in for 20 minutes. Like, we're not, we're not doing maintenance of learning. We're trying to continue to have students excel and gap fill. So we try to be really clear to folks, this is, the time commitment is very different from the spring. Like, we're trying to provide a regular instructional day virtually. And for high school students, Carl, they'll be scheduled for their blocks just virtually, unlike what students have done in person. Hi, uh, uh, Rodney had a question. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> what if a teacher just doesn't want to come in because, you know, they can say they, they're worried about the virus and they just don't want well, to do that? It's a personnel issue, but the that's not permitted um, per the Family uh, Coronavirus Virus Relief Act. It's pretty specific about what is and isn't. Um, and so what I've said to teachers is they have to fill out that paperwork because that's how we're going to prioritize and provide appropriate accommodations to teach in the virtual instruction. It can't be just, I'm not feeling comfortable or I'm anxious. That doesn't qualify for the family, um, relief for coronavirus. And so, um, one of the things that is on the agenda that I want to talk to you about at 3.4 though, Rodney, is I do have staff that I'm very concerned about. We have some SUs around us at the elementary level that are only going back two days a week. And that is impacting our staff greatly. And so I've got an uh, idea I want to run by you guys about possibly providing some child care um, for our teachers. Students would continue to receive virtual learning from the other SU. And we could use CARES fund 
um, to provide one supervisor. I don't think we're going to need more than one, um, but we do have some staff and it would be certainly cost effective for us to go about it that way compared to uh, a teacher potentially qualifying for accommodations. And then we still have to hire another teacher on top of that. I'm a bit concerned about that. Okay. John, I have a question. Kathy, go ahead. Yeah. How are you going to grade the virtual? Virtual assessment will be just like in person. So they'll get grades and report cards and all those same things. Just we are like, grading on proficiencies. Yeah. Or not pass or fail. If anything, we're going to try to really use the virtual academy to get better about the idea of actually teaching and assessing on a standards based report card at the elementary level um, and do some piloting around that. We're a bit behind in regards to teaching and assessing on a standards based report card or proficiencies, in, especially at the elementary level right now. So we're going to try to pilot some things around that at the virtual because my goal will be for you guys, an upcoming agenda item will be the concept of an SU wide elementary report card. You've done a lot of work around curriculum development, SU wide, but our report card and what the end is and what we're communicating to families is all over the board. Stacy has a question about that, I think. Uh, it's actually related to the Remote Learning Academy more generally. Um, so if you have for, if you have a follow up, Kathy, about the grading, you should. No, no, that was good. I... Okay, cool. So I was wondering if um, if families who choose the remote learning option are committed to that for the entire year, or if say a vaccine becomes available, they can go back to school when they're comfortable. So I said for a trimester because yeah. I may have to adjust staffing, and so right. the way I'm looking at this is we got to take it one trimester at a time based on what changes. That's why I'm not saying it's a year plan. Sure. I try to clarify that in my last question and answer. I do think it's a fall plan okay. that we're getting to Thanksgiving. Yep. And we're learning as we go and we're making adjustments as we go. Um, I, I think that you're going to see based on information we gather from families, we gather from staff that you guys provide that will adjust. I mean, I look at this is about the first nine weeks. And it's the best plan I think we could roll out based on the data and information we had. Okay. Um, and we'll adjust as the year goes. I'm, I think we take it one trimester at a time. Cool. One thing I'm hearing, and just so you guys know it's out there, is there is some talk about potentially the governor say, moving us to level three, state three, once the school year starts, which would be difficult at best for me um, our elementary schools will be fine. The page three put everyone back in session for five days a week in-person instruction. And I wish if they were thinking about doing that, I would know now and not after the school year starts. So to be determined, I'm just hearing that that is a potential. And if you heard the last um, press conference with the governor and Secretary French Friday, they mentioned the idea of potentially making a statement that all athletes have to be in the building five days a week for in person in order to compete. Now, I don't know what they would do to us if that wasn't the case, because I'm not, you know, we, we've offered virtual academy. I think we need to offer that. So there'll be pushback from the VSA yeah. and hopefully the school boards association, but know that that's talked about. I, I would be very surprised if there was that abrupt change at this juncture, because the past information was they wanted us to develop a plan and that's what we've done. So we'll I hope, yeah, I hope yeah. that's the case. Yeah. Have a lot of students signed up for the virtual? Those numbers are still running in. Uh, Shane was out today. I mean, with him twice coming up this week to look at the numbers. What I can tell you is about the numbers is that my colleagues have all said that it's between 15 and 20% choosing virtual. So that's what I'm operating off of. It's going to be higher in certain towns than others, but I think across the SU, we'll probably see about 15 to 20. <laughs> Megan had a question. Yeah, my, I have a question about, um, are we worried at all about, as now that these two plans are kind of out and families are considering them, if some families might choose to do more of a, a homeschool style and might not be available for as many Zooms and things, if they're going to maybe then opt out and choose homeschool, 
are we concerned about like losing those numbers in our in well, our account we certainly have tried to encourage folks to reach out to us about that and to reach out to lindy i know principals have asked them to do that i mean what we've said is is that the pre-recorded videos can be accessed at any point that's why we're pre-recording them and so the direct instruction can be accessed at any point those instructional blocks are then there to reinforce and we're also providing the office hours as a flip so if mornings are more challenging you can get the direct instruction in the afternoon but at the end of the day i don't know how i provide less megan and ensure that continued learning occurs right and the AOE made it pretty clear that they're looking for a minimum of 10 hours a week of direct contact with families in order to count them for ADM. Okay. And we let families know that the virtual plan this year is not going to be the same as the yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we, I can see some people thinking it's easier and then getting shocked because it's a lot more work. So Kathy's question was, were we explicit with families that the virtual plan is different this year? The answer is yes. We've tried to be very explicit. Um, I'm going to try to really hammer that home on Thursday night about when folks attend that info night. Um, the virtual academy is also going to require a orientation by parents. So it's not like we just roll this out. We're going to ask parents to come in prior to the launch on September 8th for an orientation virtually. Um, and we're going to also try to work out safe opportunities for us to connect with every student to do a pre-assessment, both in literacy and in math, to see where they're at and what regression occurred prior to the start of the virtual academy. Is Ray on the line? Yes. Ray, I got a question. Are you going to be able to stay ahead? Do you anticipate being able to stay ahead of all this upgrade of online or uh, will you need some help? She'll be fine, Don. She'll be fine. I mean, the help me out with the phrasing here, Jamie. The, the structure of the day is different, but the tools that are in the place, they're the same as we used in the spring. Okay. Are, are you with me? Meaning the teacher will, teachers will be instructing differently, but using the same set of tools. I got this on backwards. <laughs> You guys could have told me I had it on backwards. <laughs> Don, I have a question. Go ahead. Who is this? Uh, Bob. Mr. Gray, come ahead. I have, uh, Jamie, Thursday nights, uh, is that virtual or it is? Yeah, it'll be virtual because it's for all eight towns. Okay. So you're doing that from your office? Yep. Okay. What time is it? 530, 530 to 630. Okay. And that's been put in newsletters to the parents already, I believe, Bob. Okay. Yeah, I must say, um, I think we've had a much more coordinated effort about how we release information that families have been appreciative of. Uh, the principals have been terrific with working with the SU around releasing this in a coordinated effort so that it goes out at a very similar time and fashion. Uh, any other questions regarding the the outlay? I just had a question, Jamie. How's this going to affect the transportation needs? I was just going to say that. Okay. <laughs> That's, I'm glad you asked. So I met with the transportation company twice now. It looks like capacity is 25 on a bus, um, and we're counting for some siblings when we do that, and that we can stay within the recommendations and guidelines. Okay. So what we what we're finding is as of last Thursday, we were tracking at 60% of our families said they're going to transport themselves a majority of the time. So we're looking to transport about 40%. Plus we know we're going to have some students who do the virtual academy. Mm -hmm. Plus we know we're going to have I hope 5% I'm hoping we know more than 5% do homeschool. It could be five to 10, depending on the community. And so I think we're gonna be fine capacity wise, but it does look like we're gonna to need to provide transportation throughout. Um, but I feel good that we have the busing we need in order to do it. We're not looking to need to add busing or anything. Carl has a question. Uh, yes, Carl. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I was uh, just looking at uh, today, Dartmouth Coach talked about how they're reopening busing and they're talking about putting, uh, you know, hanging partitions between rows and, and uh, things like that. Are we expecting butlers to do any kind of modifications to their buses besides just reducing capacity? Are there... Are they going to put in plexiglass screening? What can we tell our, 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 our parents? There, are, going to there is going to be some plexi, plexiglass screening, but not every all the way through it at this point. That's why we're requiring masks from old ridership. Um, I also, just so you know, um, we, did, we did pursue this concept of doing a full health care check prior to entering buses, but I've been clear with parents that that no longer is going to take place. It would have required us to have 24 bus monitors throughout the SU starting at six o'clock. And I knew that wasn't realistic. So we've tried to be really upfront with parents that that's not going to happen. They're going to have to complete an online health check prior to getting on the bus every day. Part of that would be that the parent did take the temperature. That's what the parent's saying. We will then do another health check as soon as the students um, get off the bus. Okay, and our, our special ed um, uh, busing, the the, the, the 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 gazillion vans we have that, that that drive kids hither and yon, that's all been been uh, 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 taken care of as well because we've reduced ridership on those vans, but we can meet what we need. We're going to do some transportation a bit differently this year um, with special ed, but we're not looking to need to add any busing or anything. Actually. That's one place we might save money. I think we might be actually down to six. You had seven. Okay, so by our transportation budget line item is going to pretty much stay where it was when we approved it uh, pre-pandemic. Yes, yes. We're not looking to add anything. Thank you, sir. Um, what happens if a student gets off the bus and... Has a temperature? Yeah. They would just go to the holding room. Okay. That doesn't mean the whole bus quarantines or anything. Nothing like that happens until there's a positive result. I didn't hear the question. I, I think the question was, was, what happens if a student gets off the bus with a temperature above 100? Yep. And we know we have lots of students that are going, you know, that do come to school. I mean, I think we have to prepare for this. Kids do have temperatures and staff. So if that happens, every school has been outfitted with holding rooms that have appropriate ventilation that's been um, inspected and approved. And um, so the student would go to the holding room until the parent or guardian could come get them. And of course, they would then be monitored. It would not be until a positive test occurred that we would then look to contract trace. You don't assume because there's a temperature that the student has COVID, right? Like, but you ask for a test to be completed. Is we that... would work, the nurses would then work with the Department of Health to determine whether that made sense based on the symptoms. Okay. All right. That's the other thing I wanted you to know in COVID updates is that I think our CARES money needs part of part of it needs to be used. Tara and I are working very directly on this, just so you know, the CARES money. And so part of the CARES money, I think, has to go toward the idea that we have nurses, not necessarily school licensed nurses, but nurses or nurse subs five days a week in every building. Because when those things happen, I need to know we have the right personnel in place. We don't want principals panicking on this. And I, you know, they've got a lot in their minds. And so we are going to look to use CARES money to provide additional nurse sub coverage across every building. Okay. And that's a direct, the, what we're going to do with these things, just so you know, is with our subs, we're going to draw up MOUs. We're looking to get daily subs in place for each of our buildings. And that MOU then will directly go right to CARES. So it's a direct expense. Okay. And the, the CARES grant loves those types of expenses, just so you know. It's a direct line item. It makes sense. It's an addition that we need. And so that, that will be fully funded. There won't be any problem with that. Bob, did you have another question? Yeah. I'm, um, the transportation budget, Jamie, it, it stays the same. Yeah, I don't expect to incur any additional costs right now. How about less costs? I don't see us using less buses. 
due to the decreased ridership. Stay because, safe. you know, instead of having a capacity of 70, I think we're going to get by with 25. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're so, yeah, I don't see it. Are they running but, the same routes? Yep. That's the plan. Unless we get the information back and we realize a whole wing just doesn't ride. But I don't feel like we can determine that until a few weeks in. Because you know how it works. All of a sudden, the family's not riding, but then they decide they're going to. Yeah. So I just want to track that data for a little bit before we decide we can just not do that run, that part of the run. Have we reviewed the transportation routes? Yeah, I believe they were all redone last year. At least that's what I was told. By the, by the, by the, bus, by the bus company? By the bus company and then reviewed by the principals is my understanding. Stacy had a question. I did. Uh, I wanted to know if Lindy is going to continue to manage the stock, the physical, the physical principalship duties at the Stockbridge School as well as the Learning Academy. Yeah. Okay. So you know, the nice thing is Lindy volunteered to do this. Um, it's all hands on deck. You know, the nice thing is we suspect that Stockbridge. You know, it's our smallest school by far. In addition to that. We know that some students are going to do the virtual academy. So she right. felt like she had the capacity to do it. Okay. And, it was, and you know, we're all sharing staff. I mean, I, I've made a determination that we just, we got to all support each other here. And we're going to share staff and students. You're not going to lose any ADM because what the way the virtual academy is going to work is the student will still be registered in each district, but their place of education will just be different. They'll be their place of education will be the virtual academy, but their ADM would be still tied to your school. So you're not losing any resources here. Any student that chooses the virtual academy remains a Sharon student, yeah. Rochester Stockbridge student. They all they all remain the same. And so because I tuition all my students, sorry, Don. No, um, good. Good. Because I tuition all my students. Um, I, I think that they all have different tuition rates. So if I have some kids going to Sharon, which is less expensive than Rochester, but they're doing the virtual academy, is they're still they, a Sharon student. They're still a Sharon student. Okay. Carl. Um, two quick things on that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, well, a Sharon student remember Stacy. If by Sharon, I think you mean the Sharon Academy. That's right. That's a, that, that. That's an independent school, and you're paying the uh, the Union High School tuition average there, not uh, a, a, um, a White River Valley SU, SU uh, tuition. But uh, as far as as far as how how this works, I, I want to make sure everyone knows that um, Jamie came to the to the RSUD board. And, you know, said that he was going to do this with Lindy and Lindy, you know, we, we asked her and Lindy's like, yeah, I can do this. I think, you know, I, I've got, you know, so some of our kiddos in here that I want to really, you know, stay on top of their learning. And I, and I think I have the capacity and the bandwidth to do this. So, you know, the, the, the RSED board is, you know, was, was apprised of the plan and, and is on board. We think our kids, our, our local kids are not going to suffer with, with her running this program as well. Awesome. Thanks, Carl. Megan, did you have a question? No? Okay. Any other questions regarding transportation? What's the, what's the next up, Jamie? Um, so I have a revised calendar. Um, it was emailed earlier today. I, I had to finalize. I was, Again, I'm trying to work with the union on these things. The governor moved the date of school to September 8th, but he didn't reduce the student days because... He doesn't have the authority to do so. So the legislature won't take action on this until after August 25th. That's awful late for us to decide when our teachers are coming back. So what we're looking to do is bring teachers back on the 27th and run in service the 27th through the 3rd. And then students will start on the 8th. Um, September 4th makes a great D. I, I expect a lot of teachers excuse me, per their contract, we use that as a flex day because, as you know, a flex day is part of their master agreement. 
to f finish getting ready and be in the building to finish planning. And then the student day will start, the students' days will start on the 8th. If they decrease the student days to 170, then we're going to have to make a decision. Do we continue with 175 student days? Because we could. Or do we look to add additional in-service throughout the year? I think the union would be open to either concept. They seem to be very collaborative with this. Um, and so that's just know that we need to get this draft approved because it gets us going. But at some point, we don't need to decide right off. We, If the governor and the legislature do move to reduce the student days down to 170, we'll have some decisions to make, whether we want to stay at 175 or build in some other additional in-service. I said to the union today when I met with them, it might make some sense that we stay at 175 knowing we could drop down if we needed. And if all of a sudden we hit a place where, all right, things get bad and we are moving completely virtual, I could pop in some in-service time just before moving virtual and we're not in trouble contractually, we're not in trouble student days, it leaves us with flexibility. So I'm actually, they kind of like that idea. And I'm the more I thought about it today, I sort of like it more too. It gives the board and the administration more flexibility throughout the year. If things are humming along nicely, we have 105 student days. If we get in a jam somewhere, we could add a couple in-service days and we're still fine contractually. Hmm. I, I've shared with my colleagues, some superintendents decided to add additional days at the start here. And I don't, I'm not comfortable doing it, just so you know. In the event that the legislature doesn't drop it down to 170, let's say they dropped it down to 172. Well, I don't want to get in a situation where we're paying per diem at the end of the school year because we've gone over our contract. So this keeps us within our contract parameters. Yeah. That, that sounds like a reasonable plan, um, as long as it's not going to be of any added cost if we run into issues. Yep. Nope. This gives us a great deal of flexibility. Um, I think that if you were asking teachers, they appreciated their voice was heard. I gave mm -hmm. them a few uh, options and uh, it's within the master agreement. So okay. if you guys will make a motion and approve, that would be great. I'll get it out to folks tomorrow. Hey, Don, can I ask one question? This is Mike. Oh, yep. Uh, Jamie, I just had a qu just question when I was looking at the calendar because um, I know the kids have a they can go home at one thirty, but I see that there's still half days on the calendar. How are those? I don't because half days usually left at like twelve thirty. So what's the like? What's the difference? I guess. Well, I you know I got to work with the admin team on that. I, we haven't gotten that far yet, Mike. Okay, <laughs> we're sort of been wicked focused on the work up to school, those half days, there's nothing to say we don't move it to 1.30. Okay. Potentially. Okay. That's what I was um, wondering. Those are things we got to figure out and the admin team will weigh in on that. And those don't really matter as far as approving it? No, because as long as students go the four hours on those days, they count as a full student day. Right. Okay. Make a motion to approve the calendar. Sorry. Sorry. I just, just quickly um, about the half days and also I guess about something like a snow day. How does that affect the kids in the virtual learning academy? Do they also stick to this calendar? Yeah, I think what we would use that time is is for the virtual learning teachers to actually get together Super. and to do you know in service professional development, look at what's working virtually, what's not. I mean, that's the idea of those half days, anyways. And I think we're going to need them. Got it. Um, to ensure that our approach is working, I think more than other, common planning time is going to be critical for our success. And ensuring everyone's on the same page. Hi. Is that Kathy? Go ahead. Kathy, do you have a question? No, I was making a motion to approve the calendar. Okay. I have just a question. This yeah. is Megan. Yeah, Megan. From Stratford. Um, the, and the, about the half days, actually, when I'm looking at this now, I remember having to do some, some shuffling because we have our half days on Fridays. Yeah. So I'm assuming there's probably just another version of this calendar. Your local district, yeah. I, I've, your your insurance calendar doesn't align up to the rest of the SU with those half days, and so I'm just learning that, and I'm you know I'm learning come, some of the nuances across. So I don't know. I know that you know your kids actually went home, Megan. The sharing students didn't. Right. And so my sense is the sharing students will tend to follow this schedule because we now have a 1:30 release. 
which is very similar to what Sharon was doing on Fridays anyways. And so as far as traffic going home on Fridays, my understanding is that you still will, Megan, unless you as a board decide you don't want to do that. This wouldn't interfere with your Friday releases. Okay, and then I haven't, um, there was one comment that I'd like to ask about. Stacy mentioned something about snow days. I thought we were putting packets together in case there was a storm so that we didn't have snow days anymore. Is that not the case? I think, so my idea would be, and I got, I'm looking at my tech guy, <laughs> Don, is that I would announce a virtual learning day the day before. I mean, that's sort of yeah. what I'm hoping for, is uh, that okay. we are watching the weather, and whether it's a packet or it's virtual, I like to think we'll have virtual lessons and we'll be that good at it by then, yeah. that we would just move virtual learning day the day before. And I'll look at the weather, make a call, parents know ahead of time, and that we that wouldn't count as a snow day. It would just be a virtual learning day. I think right. it should be, there should be some positives from this, and I hope that's one of them. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to accept the, the amended calendar. Is there a second? A second. Any other discussion? I'm sorry, Carl. Oh, I, I just said I had seconded earlier. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Okay. So it's been seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor to approve the 2021 20, calendar in the new version, say aye. 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 Any opposed? You've got your calendar amended. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I mean we just did this a month ago. But. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. Oh man. So I added the policies for the package just for you to review. Uh, because I'm hoping that you know we're gonna warn these and get these approved on the 24th at the SU level. They were both pretty simple policies and straightforward. You got several members of the policy committee here. Um, if anyone had any questions about them, I just wanted to get those out there now. I thought it just made sense since we were meeting. And we've got a really booked agenda on the 24th. So um, Did everybody I thought maybe we could take care of a chunk of that right now. You can't adopt them, but if there were questions or discussion, I wanted anybody to Anybody have a chance to review them yet? I didn't. Okay, so I, we'll have to review them and discuss them more, I guess. I Carl, I didn't hear you, Carl. Uh, it, oh, I, I, I also confess to uh, to have said, oh, oh, it's policies, it's summer, and 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 and, yeah. and did not read them. Well, I, I just I'll throw out there if you have questions, if you email me or just let me know, I can just give you the thoughts of the committee if that's helpful. Um, you know, I just thought it would help streamline some things if we got an uh, agenda ahead. I'll try to start doing that more often. Okay, this way you'll read them and be ready to roll. On the 24th. That was my idea. All right. Uh, the two policies were, they came out in your packet. It was the, uh, essentially the e-waste policy, right? And uh, what was the other one? One disposition of assets and. Investment policy. They were both pretty straightforward. Yeah. And at the policy committee, we had a chance to, to prove them and pass them forward. So any other discussion on those? Moving on. What's next, Jamie? Child care. So I'm really looking for the board to give me permission to move forward with the planning purposes of opening up one location in the SU um, I believe I have an empty classroom in South Royalton I could possibly use at the elementary level to have you use advertise essentially for a person to come in daily from eight to three and supervise and provide some recreation time outside for faculty and staff members, children that are in a geographic area and SU around us that's not going back five days a week for in-person instruction at the primary grades. So example, Randolph is only going two days a week. 
We have some faculty and staff from Randolph. I know we have them in Rudd and FBUD, um, that that's going to create a, a real hardship um, for the teacher. And so they were looking for accommodations to teach virtually a few days a week, but clearly said, if I just had a place for my children, I'll be here five days a week. It's not about that. It made, and if you look under the um, Family Relief Act for COVID, child care is one of the exemptions. Now, it gets real sticky legally whether a student who's in virtual learning is provided child care or not, right? Because they're in school. And what I will tell you, though, is that my colleagues across the SU are not going down that road or rabbit hole. They're saying we got to help our faculty and staff out. So, most SUs are looking to start approaching it this way. Um, I pitched it with the Winooski Valley Soups, and they, four of them decided they thought that they would look to do something regionally up north. Now, they're lucky that they are uh, much more geographically centered, right? Like Montpelier, CVSU, U32 could all share one potentially. We don't really have anyone around us that's having this issue. Um, because we're the ones going back five days a week. Those other ones I mentioned are going back five days a week too. Um, but Barry's not, example. For us, Randolph's not. And so, and we've got an issue over in Washington, uh, Windsor Central. And so what I'd look to do is, I think we're gonna have capacity with one person to provide supervision. We would pay them the same amount we would pay a floating sub. We charge it to CARES. Uh, the parents could choose to buy lunch, and lunch could be provided if they wanted to pay for lunch. Um, and they would still do their virtual learning. We would just be there to supervise the virtual learning, keep them safe. And then we don't get into illegal stuff around ADM and taking students on from out of districts. I have a few SUs that are talking about doing that. I've reviewed this with legal. Um, I think we could get into some sticky trouble if we started permitting our faculty and staff just to attend because our neighboring SUs, I think, are going to get really grumpy about the ADM loss. And all of a sudden, we could find ourselves in disagreement legally whether that's permitted in statute. So I think this is the cleanest way to address this. Carl, do you have a question? Carl? Go ahead, Carl. I, I do. Thank you, Don. So do we think that, so you're saying that we're, we're looking at uh, the, we're, we're trying to accommodate the families of our teachers that have kids in Windsor Central or in Barrie or in Northfield or wherever. Um, and we're going to bring all those kids into a classroom um, in, in, in Royalton. And my question is, will we be able to satisfy with that one person's supervision, um, the requirements for those kids. Because what I worry about is that our teachers are going to say, I'm sending my kids to a classroom where they're going to be assisted in working with the Woodstock crew or the Northfield crew or the, or the U32 crew. And this poor teacher is going to be like, so this one kid who forgot his headphones is you know, um, supposed to be teaching algebra and he's asking me for help to try to get on this one website that they swear they need to have. And he swore he got it home. And this other girl is saying that she's having problems. I, I guess what I'm concerned about is, you know, are we committed to providing a passive safe space for these kids to be in while their parents work? Or are we committing to providing an active classroom where whoever's in there is, 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 is supporting their learning? My answer was, my thought was passive, and we would be upfront with our faculty and staff about that. I, I thought in the past that when we were talking about child care, we had to partner with an existing um, local company that was providing child care or daycare. Is that not the case still? No, this we would run this. Um, it doesn't require the child care regs because we're providing passive supervision is my understanding. I vetted this concept with Dina okay. um, and she felt comfortable that we could do it. How many students do you think you're talking about? I think we need to cap it at 12. 
Uh, and would this be limited to students who have parents working as teachers? Or any student in a neighboring? No, no, no. Uh, this is for our staff. This, this is for is... the staff. OK, got it. Yeah. I mean, the idea would be that this would be the most cost effective way for us to address this concern. Yeah. So that we're not having to hire additional staff because other staff go out. Yep. Bob? Um, these are extraordinary times, and uh, we have to do some things that are maybe different than we've ever done before. And I, this is a good idea. You know, we should just do it. Yeah, I agree. I would be on board with it. Other? I think it's going to be when you guys do this. I just so you know, I have a meeting with the whole SU, a voluntary meeting with our faculty and staff tomorrow from two to three, to just give them updates. And uh, I think this is going to really, even though I'm not a many, I don't think we have a lot of them that are going to take advantage. I think they are going to see it as a huge gesture, and they're going to feel greatly supported as they move forward to reopening on the eighth. Um, and I got 108 of them coming for a voluntary meeting already. So I'd like to make, make a motion, on. Can I make a motion that we uh, provide child care for our staff? You can make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Who seconded? Third. Who, it's been moved, seconded, and third that we provide child care as described by Jamie for our staff. Any other discussion? I would also like to I'd like to have some discussion about the time frames. If everybody is going to be going back full time in the state, are we still going to continue with this? Or what are we going to do? No, if as soon as children go back full time, Don, then they yeah. will be back in their school. Well, this we, is for folks. We that, need to make sure that's clear. Because oh, no, yeah, that would be clear to faculty. There'll be some students, there'll be some kids probably that aren't in school that maybe our teachers would want to take advantage of this as well. So I just want to be clear on that. Carl had this another for a hybrid students that are required yeah. to do hybrid learning based on their okay. and we'll have that on the registration. I, I, I would suggest a friendly amendment that we change the motion to uh, to have the superintendent come back to us with his recommendation for how to implement the child care. So he can take the he can take the survey, he can take the poll, he can figure out maybe it's two classrooms because the teachers were all like, oh, hell yeah. Um, I'm sorry, because we're being recorded. Heck yeah. Um, but, you know, let's 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 have him put together a proposal, you know, a, a proposal. Let's put a cost on it and then and then we'll we'll vote it up and down. But I, I think let's 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 support it. Let's have a motion that supports him Bob going forward to, to develop that recommendation. Well, Bob made the motion, so he'd have to approve the. I want to I want to just stick with it. I want to take care of it. Jamie's got a lot going on on his plate. He doesn't need any more. I think that we just do it. All right, so there's a motion on the floor. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, and I'm going to have to oppose it just, just so I, at this point, because that's too much unknown. But uh, the ayes have it. Thank you, guys. What's the next one? That's it. No, you're not. Oh, sorry, I, I added a resignation. Yes. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, Zachary Ali Brown, who was uh, the, the, what was his title, Ray? The integrationist at the SU yeah. Yeah. has resigned um, effective on the 14th. And so we put a posting up in regards to finding a technician uh, for the SU. And that's how we're going to look to fill that position as of now. And um, Ray thinks that he has a qualified candidate internally to do a technician position. Um, there are some savings in that as well. And um, our school next year. <laughs> Yeah, so we got two, of, two districts voting tomorrow. So I'm going to feel relieved a bit if we can get two more approved budgets. Yes. And if you know voters in Granville and Hancock, give them a little. There's I'll one. Second. Moved and second to adjourn. I'd love to thank everybody for their time. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Hey, Thank you.
Take care.